good morning my name is Tsungai Mkomba I would like to welcome you to today's service and today I am reading the notices our birthdays in March we have on the first for this week on the first of March Rachel Thresher second Craig Mackenzie on the third Sarah Kruger on the third again Dale White please call them and wish them their be happy birthdays and I would like to ask you to pray for the following Dale White Doreen Kruger Luanda Mbenze Mora and George Payne Lona and Derek Hedgecook Juni McNichol Joe and Ernst Grobla and to also ask you to pray for the people who, who work to provide care, resources, and support for those affected by COVID-19, and those who mourn, and those who are ill at home, and those who are ill in hospitals, and those who face unemployment due to COVID. And we also want you to pray for the nurses and the doctors. Have a wonderful day. Be strong and bold. Have no fear or dread, because it is the Lord your God who goes with you. God will not fail you or forsake you. Adoration. Let us offer our praise to God. We lift, we lift our, our voices, voices in gratitude and praise. praise. Creator, we adore you. All creation reflects your glory. We lift, lift our, our voices in gratitude and praise. You have made women, men, girls and boys in your image. You welcome those who are vulnerable with open arms of compassionate acceptance. We, we lift, lift our voices in gratitude and praise. Redeemer, we adore you. All creation is reconciled in you. We, we lift, lift our, our voices in gratitude and praise. Where the weak and broken lie bruised and discarded, you challenge the complacent, revealing the truth behind our lies, and invite the wounded to your feast of life. We lift our, our voices in gratitude, gratitude and praise. Sustainer, we adore you. All creation is inspired by you. We, we lift, lift our, our voices in gratitude and praise. You breathe life into places of deathly fear. You increase our understanding of things hard to comprehend and draw us into your dance of loving joy. We, we lift, lift our voices in gratitude and praise. God, three in one, 
all creation sings your great deeds. We, we lift, lift our, our voices in gratitude and praise. Amen. I know he rescued my soul. His blood has covered my sin, I believe. Shame is taken away. My pain is healed in His name. I believe. I believe. I'll raise a banner. Cause my Lord has conquered the grave. My Redeemer lives. My Redeemer. I'm dancing on this mountain top to see your kingdom come. My Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives. confession. We have not always lived in ways that reflect God's love for all. There are times when prejudice and ignorance have caused us to judge others as less important, less capable, less whole than ourselves. Gracious God, release us and grant us mercy. We have not always lived as people assured of our place in God's heart. There are times when despair has been our refuge and when we have turned from God's promises. Gracious God, release us and grant us hope. We have not always lived as disciples of Jesus. There are times when the paths to wealth and power have been more attractive than the longer roads of justice, peace and tolerance. Gracious God, release us and grant us courage. We have not always lived as people of the resurrection. There are times when we have only seen the world as a place of threat and brokenness, forgetting God's creative genius. Gracious God, release us and grant grant us wisdom. wisdom. In quietness, we remember those thoughts, actions and words that have marred your image in us, hurt others and damaged the world. God has heard the confession of our hearts and minds. In Christ we are set free. Thanks be to God. Amen.
the name of Jesus Christ our King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silenced the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. You have no right, you have no evil, now and What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. As we offer our prayers for the world and for ourselves, we will share in times of silence allowing us to reflect on the needs of others and on our own experiences. As we reflect, it may be that God will speak into that silence and help us to understand the world and our lives in new ways. We remember creation, breathed into life by God's Holy Spirit. Places of beauty and brilliance, places of grandeur and spectacle, Places of extravagant diversity. We pray, creating God, for places damaged and degraded. For people scraping a living from land made fruitless by human greed. Let us observe a moment of silence. Help us to live sparingly and to care for creation. Gracious God, hear our prayer. We remember humanity, breathed into life by God's Holy Spirit. People of beauty and brilliance, people of gifts and grace, people of extravagant diversity. We pray healing God for people whose lives are diminished because they live with illness, for people facing stigma caused by misunderstanding, and for people struggling to find help when they need it. Let us spend a moment again in silence. Help us to be welcoming, helpful and more aware of those things that make for the well-being of others and ourselves. Gracious God, hear our prayer. We remember the Church, breathed into life by God's Holy Spirit, a community of beauty and brilliance, a community of love and compassion, a community of extravagant diversity. We pray, inspiring God, for denominations working out how to be one family, offering an effective witness to your love in the world, for churches with projects that offer to help people struggling in any way, for ourselves, and people in our own families and community who need to be understood, accepted and loved. Let's spend a moment in silence. Help us to be willing to change ourselves and inspired to change the world. Gracious God, hear our prayer. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Our reading today is from Luke 11, 
I'm reading from verse 14 to verse 26. The heading is Jesus and Beelzebul. Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. When the demon left, the man who had been mute spoke, and the crowd was amazed. But some of them said, By Beelzebul, the prince of demons, he is driving out demons. Others tested him by asking for a sign from heaven. Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined, and a house divided against itself will fall. If Satan is divided against himself, how can his kingdom stand? I say this because you claim that I drive out demons by Beelzebul. Now if I drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your followers drive them out? So then they will be your judges. If I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man fully armed guards his own house, his possessions are safe. But when someone stronger attacks and overpowers him, he takes away the armor in which the man trusted and divides up his plunder. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes seven other spirits, more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse than the first. Thanks be to God for this reading from His Word. Amen. To lasiswe ungabo kala ujehova wako zobungobela. To lasiswe ungabo So good morning. As you would know, today is Doe's induction service, and it's a service that is being conducted by the bishop. And so what we're hoping to do is record that service and make that available online um, for those who can't be there at a later stage, hopefully later today. But for now, this is the online message then, uh, which I will be doing for today. So as I was reflecting on the text for today, I remembered back to my childhood days and the games we used to play, running around with our cap guns, chasing and hiding from each other. Even today, too many decades later, I can still clearly recall the sound and the smell of the caps, which of course always made this lovely tiny explosion as the pulling of the trigger in turn set the hammer of the gun in motion. It was quite thrilling at the time, although I've steered clear of firearms ever since. I know enough about my shooting skills to be aware that I'm much more likely to shoot myself in the foot than ever to hit any target. 
But in the childhood games that I played with my friends, there were always two groups. The goodies and the baddies. Sometimes cops and robbers. Even then it was clear that in the game of life, you need to choose which side you're going to be on. In my childhood games, sometimes players left the game. Someone might trip and fall or get frightened and need some reassurance from mom. Or simply lose interest and go and do something else. But in life, however, we don't have that option. We can't opt out. Whatever we do or don't do involves making a choice for good, for God, or for evil. And you would have heard some version of these words. It's a quote which has been attributed to various people. But for evil to flourish, it requires only that good men and women do nothing. For evil to flourish, it only requires that good men and women do nothing. So it turns out that such good people who allow evil to flourish are not so good after all. Scripture is very clear about the conflict between good and evil and the need to make choices. In Joshua 24 and verse 15, Joshua addresses the Israelites and says that choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. Now, nothing has changed. You still have to make those choices. God describes himself as a jealous God, um, someone who, a God who will not tolerate opposition in Zechariah 8 verse 2. The Old Testament prophets warned about idols, and indeed the first of the Ten Commandments says, you shall have no other gods besides me in Exodus 20 verse 3. And that message is carried through into the New Testament. The same message, the same warnings apply to idols or anything that can take the place of God in our lives. As it says in Matthew 6 verse 4, you cannot serve both God and money. Now there's nothing inherently wrong with money or work or pleasure or achievements, but where you start to serve these things, and they're all created things, they're all things that God has created for good, when you start to serve these things instead of the Creator, they become destructive and so become evil for you. As Paul writes in Romans 14 verse 23, Everything that does not come from faith is sin. So we live in a conflict zone. And the conflict is between good and evil. The conflict is between what serves and honors God and what does not serve and honor God. And this conflict is demonstrated in the Luke passage that uh, Ellen has read for us today, where Jesus drove out a demon which had oppressed the man so that he could not speak. When the man who had been set free began to speak, the crowd were amazed. But some of them, the Pharisees, said that the only reason Jesus could drive out the demon was because he was harnessing the power of the devil to do so. Others also would not believe and said they wanted a sign from heaven before they would believe. The deliverance in itself was not enough for them. Now, Jesus knew what these doubters were whispering among themselves. He even knew what they were thinking. How does it even begin to make sense that Satan should interrupt his own operations? Jesus asks. So, so would Satan drive out one of his own demons so that the victim of the demon should be healed? Not likely. And, says Jesus, just a question. Um, if I am driving out demons by the power of the prince of demons, then just wondering which power are your people using to do this? But, says Jesus, if I drive out demons by the finger of God, in other words, if I'm really doing this by God's power, then the kingdom of God has come to you. In other words, what you are seeing is God's power in conflict with evil and overcoming evil. And this was what Jesus' ministry was all about, to destroy the works of Satan 
and to preach that the kingdom of God was near. When Paul gives his testimony to King Agrippa in Acts chapter 26, he explains that when he met Jesus in that blinding flash of light on the road to Damascus, Jesus told him that he was being sent to turn people from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God in verse 18. So from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God. The conflict is clear. As Dennis Willard points out, just because God's kingdom is near, just because God's kingdom is at hand, through Jesus making it possible for those who trust in him to be forgiven and reconciled with God, that does not mean that there are not other kingdoms still present on earth, along with God's kingdom. That is the human condition. There is a conflict, and it's up to us to choose what side we're on. What this means is that people other than God, people like you and me, are still allowed on earth to have a say, which is contrary to God's will. Jesus may have brought the kingdom of God, but there's still a kingdom of darkness, as well as the kingdoms of many individuals who are still trying to run their own show. And God permits this. Sometimes when we feel the effect of these other kingdoms, when they come crashing into our life, when others' greed and selfishness harms us, we may ask again, why? Why does God simply not destroy evil once and for all? Well, the answer to that is, firstly, that he will. And in fact, he's doing just that in the miracle of changed lives and new hope for those who had none. God has provided for us to be with him forever in a place full of his glory, where there will be no more mourning or death or crying or pain, as it says in Revelation chapter 21. And that day is coming soon for each of us, perhaps sooner than we think. But then why does God delay? Well, in the wise words of James Packer, if God moves more slowly than we wish in order to clear out evil of his world and introduce the new order, that, we may be sure, is in order to widen his gracious purpose and include in it more victims of the world's evil than otherwise he could have done. So the fact that God may seem slow to us in driving out evil is really God providing an opportunity for more people to come in, more people that have been damaged and bound up by sin. God wants everyone to come to life in Christ. And so he will give the maximum opportunity to people to be able to do that. So it's, it's, it's as a result of God's grace and God's mercy. Now, there's no doubt then that victory is the Lord's, but what that means is God widening the opportunity means that living on earth with the clash of kingdoms, the conflict, means that there will be man-made disasters such as war and famine and oppression and environmental degradation, as well as natural evils such as disease, you know, pandemics, um, and scarcity and poverty and weather-related disasters. And in Psalm 23, that wonderful psalm of comfort, we read, In the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil. But the point is that the evil is very much present and is to be feared. And we read that you prepare a place before me, or table before me, sorry, in the presence of my enemies. And again, the enemies are very much here, but we are safe in God's hands as the other kingdoms loom over us and threaten us. So God's kingdom has come through Christ. It is already here, but it's not yet fully revealed. One day soon it will be, but for now there are places where God's rule is not being carried out and where his will is not yet being done. This is the conflict. Sometimes the places where God's kingdom has not yet fully come where other kingdoms may still dominate or be influential, lies in the lives of those who are Christ followers. Now you'd expect 
there to be other kingdoms dominating and being completely influential in the lives of those who don't follow Christ. But in the lives of those who claim to follow Christ? Hmm. Now to use an analogy, when someone becomes a Christian and invites Jesus to come into her life, it is as if she hands over the keys to her house. But what she discovers is that this isn't enough. Jesus wants to get into every room including those with locks on the doors because of what's hidden inside. He wants to enter every room because he wants to live there. But he won't break the doors down. We need to choose to open up more and more of our life to him. We need to open those locked doors ourselves. But it can be hard to do because what is behind the locked door may be so much a part of our lives that we don't want to let go of it. So this is conflict. What we need to realize, even as Christians, maybe especially as Christians, is that the battle with darkness and sin is a daily process. In the context of Alcoholics Anonymous, there's an understanding that those who fight the battle not to return to their dependence on alcohol are recovering alcoholics. In a real sense, each one of us who has asked Jesus to be Lord of our lives is still a recovering sinner. Just as the alcoholic's struggle against the return to the bottle is fought on a day-by-day -day basis, so we recovering sinners fight a daily battle not to return to the sins that dragged us away from God's love and purposes in the first place. Every day we must commit ourselves to choose Jesus 100% in all we say, in all we do, in all we think. Sin is insidious. It seeps in and steals away our security and confidence in Christ without us even realizing it. Our capacity to praise and worship God is silenced by our guilt at our disobedience. Being out of step with God means that we often out of step with others and don't treat them with the openness and love and care that we should. We may think that we're hiding our secret sin, but it's like trying to carry an ice cream cone in a paper bag. At some point, the sin and its effects will come dripping through. God takes sin seriously because he knows the destructive effect of sin on our lives. Sin can steal our joy and our peace, and sin will disrupt our relationship with the living God. So there's a conflict. The conflict zone is all around us. The conflict zone is even in our own lives. We can't be neutral. By not choosing sides, we've already chosen a side. Just sitting back and trying not to do wrong is not enough. We have to actively turn away from sin and actively turn towards Jesus every day, often several times a day. Not only should we not sin, but we need to be doing what Jesus came to do, to destroy the works of Satan. Can we really do this? Yes, not in our own strength, but God will equip us to live life in such a way that the choices we make not only draw us closer to God, but they also draw those around us closer to God. We dare not keep returning to our sin or even trying to be neutral. Jesus says in Luke 11 verse 23, which we heard earlier, that the person who is not with him is against him. And the person who does not gather with him scatters. If you're not helping, you're making things worse. Do we really want to serve the interests of God's enemies? By God's grace and mercy, demonstrated once and for all on the cross, each of us may be reconciled to God, made righteous and acceptable in his sight through Jesus' sacrificial death. He paid the price each one of us should have paid. But this freedom costs Jesus everything. When we toy with sin, we treat Jesus' death on the cross as a cheap thing. Instead, we are called to take our place in the conflict on the side of God, standing firm against sin in his power, and bringing his mercy and love and healing to a broken and needy world. God wants to use us to be a blessing.
We are called to be part of his plan, part of his army in the conflict. But then we need to choose life every day by choosing him over the sin that entangles and drags us down. Choose life, not death. Choose light, not darkness. Choose the freedom that God so freely gives, but that cost Jesus everything when he laid down his life in love. Choose God. Choose to be on his side in the conflict zone. May the Lord bless you as you seek to follow him this week. In Jesus' name. Friends, as we prepare ourselves to receive communion in our homes, we remember how, on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus gave new meaning to this feast. After telling the disciples that one of them would betray him, and while they were eat eating, Jesus took bread, when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, as we break and then eat this bread, we are profoundly grateful that you took upon yourself the role of the Passover lamb by giving your body as a sacrifice for all humanity. Then Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink from it, all of you, and that included Judas. And Jesus continued, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. O Jesus, as we drink of the cup, we are eternally grateful that through your sacrifice all humanity has a clear picture of what God's immeasurable mercy cost. As we eat this bread and drink the cup, may each one of us encounter in some mysterious way the reality of Emmanuel, of God with us in Jesus Christ. Amen. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I had heard my people cry, overdwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them, whom shall I save? Here I am, Lord, it is I, Lord, I have heard you calling in the night, I will go, Lord, where you lead me, I will hold 
Thank you for joining us today, friends, and please also join me as we share in the benediction, and I invite you to do so in the language of your choice. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.